are here with Alec. He just, I mean, it was like a month ago, took delivery of your brand new 992 C4S Cabriolet. And so far, how are you liking it? Um, so far, I'm liking it a lot. It's pretty much what I expected it to be. Okay. Um, I had a C4S cab from a 991.1 generation. And, uh, you know, like looking at this one, it's a lot more modern. It's a lot more... Um, you know, I spec this out, this one out myself. Mm -hmm. The other one, I just picked up uh, through Platinum Motor Cars. So, okay. So, well, this is this is your daily driver. Yep. Um, let's start about the exterior. How do you feel about the 992 generation design stuff? We talked about it a little bit. You told me some stuff. Let's reiterate some of the things. Well, honestly, in the very beginning, I didn't like the 992 design <laughs> on, the, on the outside. Um, it took some use, uh, some time to get used to. Okay. I mean, you got used to a 991 and how that looked. Um, but then actually. After a while, after seeing it at the gallery show at the mm -hmm. North, North American Auto Show, um, and seeing it in the flesh versus just pictures, I kind of started liking it more. I started in the very beginning. I really didn't like the front bumper and I didn't like the back bumper. But then after seeing it over and over again, I kind of understood. Okay, this is where Porsche was going. Yes, um, they wanted to go with a more modern um, look to their car. I mean, you can definitely see it with the interior, um, and that's the biggest to me. The biggest difference is the interior more than the exterior. Okay, um, but then you. So this was the reason I thought it was interesting. You did not want the sport design package yep. because that made it look like a 991 again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it looks a lot like a 991 generation GT3. Yes. Right? It's not not like a 991 uh, normal car, but like a GT3. So I have one already, so <laughs> I didn't need another What's one. What's the point? Yeah. So, and I didn't like how on lighter colors, um, like both the sport design package and the standard bumpers, both of them have a lot more black plastic in it, and I didn't really like how that looked. Um, so I definitely wanted to go and stick with a darker color okay. uh, for the 992. Okay. Yeah, so this is Avin, Aventurine, Aventurine Green? Yeah, Aventurine Green. Aventurine Green on the RS Spider wheels. Yep. You did think about the like the goldish bronzes one, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, called Satin Aurum. Satin Aurum. Uh, anything else? So what are the major options you put on this thing? Because this thing has a window sticker of 161,000? Yep. That, um, th doesn't that seem like a ton to you for just like a C4S? I mean, they raised the base price because um, I think it started at 130 something now. So oh, really? I think a regular C4S is 117 and then, because yours is a cabriolet. Yeah. Okay. One third. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So um, op major options, full leather interior. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's a Porsche. Like every little thing just premium, seems to yeah. add up. Yeah. Yeah. Premium package with you know. So I have the heated seats, mm -hmm. ventilated seats. Um, I have Bose. I didn't do Burmeister because that would have been another five grand um, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, I mean, I don't feel like I went crazy on the options list. Uh, the RS Spider wheels were more um, than the standard wheels. Um, Aventurian Green is just a metallic color, so that's yeah. about like six or seven hundred bucks. Um, oh my. Yeah, they're just different little things like you know Porsche crests embossed crests in your headrest yeah um, that's probably like five or six hundred bucks and it's just Porsche definitely they, makes money they love they love yeah the options are I remember I once optioned a Panamera 4S to $187,000 yeah. the V6 Panamera 4S I'm like this is 991 GT3 buddy I'm like what in the world yeah it's crazy so what do you think about the interior because you've told me you had a couple of minor issues with things with PCM well, yeah, I mean, definitely I liked this interior, like how it looked when I first got it. But mm -hmm. obviously the same things that everyone else is talking about, I'm experiencing. Like you can't see the outer two dials on your front instrument cluster. So, I mean, it's kind of annoying if I want to look at how much gas or distance left miles to empty. Mm -hmm. I have to either peer this way or peer this way. Yeah. So you can't just see it straight off the bat. Same with the clock over on the left. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see it better from here than like in an actual yeah, driver's seat. Exactly. But I mean, the, the center stuff, I mean, obviously your speedometer is in the middle, um, the tachometer is on the left, uh, I mean, in the middle too. The middle, yeah. Uh, then you have a speedometer on, on the left, I should the say. The digital display speed is redundantly had in the middle. Yeah. Which is good. And then, you know, they, they did, again, advance the tech on it where the, the speed limit signs, it's reading signs, it's also doing it through GPS. Mm -hmm. I think it's doing both. Okay. So, because um, sometimes when I'm driving, like by my house, I have a school speed limit and it'll actually tell you, I've had three different uh, warning signs here. <laughs> One is the speed limit's 30. Yeah. And then it says school speed limit 25. Yeah. And then it says curve ahead. So it actually oh, wow. has three different things. That's a lot of, that's info overload almost. All in that one little gauge cluster. Little tiny screen. So. Couple, how do you feel about the tiny shifter? Um, again, 
reading about it online, I didn't like it. I when I saw it at the auto show, I also didn't like it. But mm-hmm. using it, I it mean, works. honestly, I never really manually shift. I didn't shift on the last PDK using the shifter. I would oh, okay. al- I'd always paddle shift anyways. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really mind that. Again, what I mind more is the 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 two giant pieces of black shiny plastic that yeah. I feel like are just going to get scratched up. Um, piano black. Yeah, piano black trim that you know on the old. You know, on a nine, uh, on a Panamera, or on a Cayenne, even I think these all have haptic display. There's yes. something functional in it, and I think that they try to keep the design language the same. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's great. It looks the same, but on those that are functional, on mine, it's not functional. There's so nothing else for it to do right there. The only thing it does for me is to get scratched. Honestly, if, <laughs> if you put keys on it, if you do something, if you wipe it, I mean, it's. I can already see tiny little, like you know, just like on an iPhone, I can yeah. see little micro scratches I like this that you can yeah, replace yeah. the cup holder with a little storage cup thing yeah <laughs> yep uh, that, you know it actually has a cup holder that was a big thing and there's another the, one right here yeah is over there yeah this um, is, practicality wise it's great so you I mean there's a kid seat back there because you have a nine year old yeah he I, fits back there nine year old and four year old and a four year old they, they back both sit in the back okay uh, so we can have four people in this car as long as the people in the back are very little uh, <laughs> as long as they are small they will fit back there yeah. uh yeah full size have you tried getting back there uh no no i would definitely would not fit no. yeah <laughs> it's not for that but then okay so then in terms of driving how do you feel because you've had 991 c4s you've had gt3 and then all the other stuff lt huracan yeah. how do you feel like this thing drives i mean it's comfortable i mean it's it's getting more and more like a gt yeah which is fine for me because i'm actually contemplating if next year I should switch this out to a Bentley GT convertible. So, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I definitely like, I mean, I have sports cars for the track. Yes. This is my daily driver. So that's why I didn't do stuff like rear, uh, rear, rear axle steering. On oh, car. okay. Um, I, you know, I did do sport chrono and the sport exhaust and, and things like that just cause I like how it sounds. That uh, probably also help with resale. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, also one thing that I did option out cause of reading online, reading on rent lists and stuff like that. Uh, I did op- upgrade to the brushed aluminum trim because I have seen the Diamar trim and I'm not impressed because okay. that's what uh, when the dealership got its first batches of 911s, there was you know basically two. One is a was a coupe, a C2S coupe, and mine. Okay. And the C2S coupe uh, had the basic normal trim. Okay. And it's just like this bumpy plastic. So oh. All of this is. Um, like not gray, as nice. bumpy plastic. Okay. Versus, this is, you know, this real... brushed aluminum feels nice. It's cool to the touch too. So yeah, it's, yeah that's nice. Uh, so you, I mean, you're you're already thinking about the next car. You've had this for barely a month. So does that mean you haven't fallen in love with it enough that you want to keep it? No, no, no. Or is it just I, I, that... do, I do like I do like this car a lot. Okay. I mean, I just tend to go through cars quickly. That but, is, yes, uh, that's true. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, this is exactly what I like about 911s is that they don't. You know, you don't worry about it. My wife drives this car. I have no qualms with it. Like my wife driving the 600 LT, she's worried because the front bumper I was told cost thirty thousand dollars to replace. If if she were to like hit a carpet, you know, yeah. parking curb. Yeah. On this car, you know, they, they know that you're gonna scrape the front, it's so it's plastic. So yeah. you, you know, literally that's a hundred and twenty-five dollar part. It's okay if she scrapes it. You know, if it runs into something, we'll just replace that. Because okay. It's like, I think four bolt, uh, four screws. Yeah. And some. So yeah. a little more peace of mind because. Yeah. That's not a carbon fiber clad supercar. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, overall, though, you think 992 is better than 991 in every way? Um, for this purpose, yes. I yes, mean, that's I, a daily you know, driver. Obviously, like this is not a GT3, um, so this is not a track focused car. But compared to my previous, you know, 991.1 C4S cab, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I like this better. I mean, it's more comfortable. Um, it's faster. Uh, Very you know, fast. I, I haven't. You know, I, you know, I'm still at just under eight, 900 miles. 898 miles. Yeah. So I haven't really fully let it all go because it has a break-in period mm-hmm. still. Um, but you can just tell. I mean, this car has a lot of torque, has a lot of power. Um, I mean, I think it's up to what 440. But per the numbers, it it's 443 and 390. Yeah. And like, I think there was a magazine that tested the 60 and three seconds flat, uh-huh. which. Seems faster. I mean, it's just a testament to the traction control system, the transmission, and just the overall chassis setup. Yeah, that's, well, you think that's... about... The, I mean, they always do that, right? Because if you think about a 991.1 or point two Turbo S... Yeah. I mean, also. yeah, I think that had 500 horsepower. Five, yeah, 500 to 550. Yeah. 
It was two point, but it was two point five to sixty. Yeah, it was a rocket ship. You're so right. If you, so yeah. if you think about it, that's going two point five, two point six. Yeah, this being the next generation at three point oh is kind of like okay, yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> where, where it's trending to. The crazier <laughs> thing will be to see where the nine nine two turbo yes. s lands because yeah. i mean if you're now getting to what like maybe 2.3 or something yeah like you're gonna be yeah you know they're talking about possibly doing a, a hybrid yeah. with it so we'll see where that one lands you're, you're gonna start running into like laws of physics at a certain point which you yeah. hit a plateau and they're all insanely insanely fast yeah cool so 992 c4s cab oh i guess one other question is why cab and not coupe um again for me i like you know not track car this is more com you're com gonna have car. like seven convertibles now yeah slight well, exaggeration gt4 no, it's boxer spider bentley gtc this car and then oh, actually only three yeah but you wanted a convertible for sure yeah i like cabs i mean okay. i like for me you know i don't traditionally i haven't daily driven my cars so uh for my like you know for my business and stuff like that i didn't drive Porsches, I would always just drive like a, a Navigator or a, oh, yeah. or a GL or something that's just more SUV, uh -huh. um, you know, a regular car. Um, but, you know, life's short, so I've started to drive my more fun cars to there. But, you know, I I think I, for a cab, it's a, you know, for me, it's going out to dinner with my wife. You know, we can put the top down. We're usually going out. I actually like convertibles for like evening mm -hmm. um, or, or mornings. I don't like it actually in the bright sun because it's okay. too hot. You're just baking in the sun. Okay. I like it actually at nighttime or evening. You put the top down. You know, this car, just like the last generation, it has the windscreen that's automatic in the back. Mm -hmm. So if you put up all the windows and, you know, put the windscreen up, you can have a conversation. You have heated seats. You have heated steering wheel. I mean, literally, it's comfortable till it's like, you know, it can be 40 degrees outside. And you're still okay. On, you're still perfectly fine. Your little cocoon of warmth. Exactly. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't have a neck scarf like a the Mercedes, Mercedes or something. Or something yeah. But. yeah, I mean, it sounds like you love, it's a great daily driver. It fits exactly what you wanted. Yes. Um, I mean, the, the only thing is, obviously, with it being so digital now, yeah. there are certain things that it's like overly complex, like the home link. Um, you know, I'm used to three buttons that you can program for home link. On this car, you can program as many buttons as you actually want, mm -hmm. but the problem is it's all GPS located. So like when I drive up to my house, it's technically, it, come, it happens 60% of the time um, where it automatically brings up my garage door openers. I can just yeah. select one or two and that's oh, okay. great. That's nice. That's nice, but sometimes it doesn't. And all the other 40% of the time is like, well, door open please. So then I have programmed one of my customizable buttons for oh, HomeLink okay. just because like okay so that's great for coming home but mm -hmm. when i'm leaving in the morning as soon as i hit you know it pops up right when i start the uh, if i've started the car and i've driven it that day yeah the pcm's you know still kind of awake yeah then it shows that my garage it brings up home link because i'm in my garage but the problem is once i go into reverse the backup cameras come on and then you know even if you go back into drive the backup cameras the cameras still stay yes. on so then I have to exit out of the cameras, and then the home link's gone. So then I'd have to push one of my programmable buttons to bring up home link again, just to close my garage door. So that's like a lot of cumbersomeness. Yes, the complexity is actually inconvenient. Yeah, and then other times, um, you know, home link, uh, the PCM. If it's the first time in the morning, like mm -hmm. when I first drive the car, all the PCMs loading up. Sometimes I've already backed out of my garage, and I'm just sitting in my driveway <laughs> waiting for. PCM to finish loading so that I can hit the button because if I hit the button nothing happens it just, so I'm just sitting oh. there for like 10 20 I feel like an eternity but it's probably 10 or 20 seconds yeah waiting for the computers to finish booting up so I can close my garage door um, okay so these are the inconveniences and also you know since the screen is fully programmable I haven't actually gone through it because I it, it works already good enough as it is but mm -hmm. technically like key one can be with my wife where it just automatically will know that key one is with my wife key two is with me yeah and when you just get in the car it'll bring up it'll say hello alec actually in the morning yeah i, know, I noticed that yeah so, and it says change driver if you want to change driver yeah. yeah so i mean there's it's trying to get more advanced uh, like i said first world problems again where the key fob <laughs> when i'm going up i mean 
sometimes though you look like an ass because you're just trying to open your door. To you're open. opening your door. Yeah. I'm sliding my, you know, you know, the, the, the sales advisor is like, you know, to open your door. You have to slide your hand underneath or try to feel around. Yeah. And it'll pop the door handle open. And then you, you know, sometimes I'm whatever. I, I have my key in my pocket. I'm not trying to use the key because yeah. it has keyless entry. And I'm sitting there for like 10 seconds, kind of like, okay, are you gonna open? And then I'm like jiggling my pocket because I feel like that's been my mo where okay if you jiggle your key so it knows that it's like awake or something yeah. then it'll open the door so i'm like jiggling my pocket to try to get the door to open or to lock either way like i'm sitting there i'm like come on lock yeah. lock lock well, you showed me earlier it just wouldn't do so, it I, it's I, the, what brings me what brings to mind is like when the first 12 seats came out the swipe to open doors uh-huh. they worked like 25 percent of the time yeah. so they went to a button all the mclaren doors is an actual button now yeah i think when they try to implement that futuristic tech yeah it's just more inconvenient sometimes exactly so i mean things like that those are the the, the little qualms again just like when we were in the car earlier mm-hmm. and i put up the top and you're here that side rear window didn't close and then i mean i've had that happen multiple times that was the first time okay Uh, but when i'm in the car by myself it closes it's really weird like so when my son is sitting up in the front seat sometimes and i close the top it doesn't do it all the time so i don't know if it's weird sensing someone's here yeah or what but in any case it's really weird because mine will always goes up mine mine did go up so it's kind of like what's going on all right Um, so I guess in summary, what it's like to own a 992 C4S. Well, it looks great. It drives amazing. It's got all the newest tech, despite some, I, guess I would describe those growing pains. As, yeah. As like, oh, ouch. Uh, <laughs> Michigan roads suck. Yeah. Uh, this is why your Cayenne Turbo Coupe is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, that or, or, or any, uh, as you've been thinking of a Raptor. So that you yeah, Raptor would be cool. I want a Gladiator. Yeah. Uh, anyways. As a C4S, it's great. Hopefully, we'll do more videos of this. Maybe do a comparison with like the GT3, see how it feels. I don't know. Crazy ideas for videos. Thanks, Alec. This was a lot of fun. I am looking forward to driving it. Sure. Enjoy it as your daily driver. Yep. And we're going to get some food for your kids because they're hungry. <laughs> and that is the end of the video. All right. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Yep. Thanks.